To a physicist, uh, reality tends to mean the laws of physics, and this is turning things on its head a bit from a hundred years ago, because if you stopped the average uh, Victorian physicist in the street and said, you know, what is reality, you probably would have been told, well, it's uh, the state of all particles of matter at this moment in time. And then along came the revolutions in relativity, our understanding of space and time, and quantum physics, our understanding of matter. And so uh, this moment of time has no universal meaning. Uh, matters sort of dissolved away into fuzziness. And the one concrete thing that physicists latch onto are the wonderful laws that sort of keep this lot afloat. Uh, but for me now, even those laws have gone into the melting pot. And so uh, what is reality uh, really becomes a very difficult thing. And I think ultimately it comes back to observations, that reality is the thing that we get when we observe the world. And so that's why I take observers uh, really very seriously. I don't think we're just optional extras. I think we're absolutely fundamental part of the plot. So you would embed the existence of observers as well as the laws of physics in your definition of reality? That's absolutely right. I have always taken observers, life, mind, Seriously, I don't think that mind is just some sort of uh, quirky little embellishment on the great scheme of things. I think it is integral to the nature of the universe. Now, theologians would say that in addition to the physical universe or cosmos, there is a spiritual reality populated by God, certainly, and maybe lots of other beings uh, that God created, and that to define reality, you need to have a physical reality and a non-physical or spiritual reality in their uh, total definition. Yeah, now physicists have come quite close to this position because the traditional view of the nature of the laws of physics is that they transcend the physical universe. If you say, well, mm. where were the laws when the Big Bang happened? Well, they were floating in some sort of platonic heaven. Uh, goodness knows what. And so physicists are fairly comfortable with the idea of a reality beyond uh, what impinges on our senses or the stuff, you know, that, of, of, of the world. They just Earth. differ what was in that reality. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And, and I know many physicists who uh, are quite comfortable, actually, with thinking that uh, the laws of physics are uh, chosen or uh, depend for their existence on, on a god or on a designer being. And so uh, th that's right, but they're comfortable with the notion of something uh, beyond. Um, and I used to be fairly uh, comfortable with this platonic view of uh, uh, transcendent reality, but I've become more and more dissatisfied with it because it seems to me that you're just shoving the problems off into some unseen, unknowable realm. So therefore, when you are alone at night and you're really reflecting on what you feel, not, not in any public presentation, but what are your biggest questions? Uh, when I was a child, I used to lie awake at, at night, like most children, staring up at the, 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 the darkness of the ceiling uh, and thinking, well, why am I here and is there a meaning to it all and how did it all come to exist? I've never stopped asking those questions and I think through science and mathematics we've come to understand a lot more. But I'm still looking for the answers to these things. It seems to me uh, that mathematics and the laws of physics ought to somehow explain each other or emerge together. Not that mathematics is just assumed to exist for no reason, and again, for no reason, physics makes use of some of it. I think there's got to be a deeper explanation. And for me, what I wonder is, um, is, is instead of thinking of mathematics as in a warehouse already existing in a platonic realm, uh, maybe we think of mathematics as more like a computer program uh, that's being run on the great cosmic computer. The universe itself is like an information processing system, and the laws of physics are part of the the program or the algorithm that it's working out. And if you think of mathematics as inherent in the universe, like this computer program, rather than floating freely in some platonic warehouse, uh, then that gives you a very different view. And inevitably you think, well, why did the universe engineer its own existence in a way that gives it this mathematical form and content? And, and I don't know the answer to that, but I'm sure that the correct place to look uh, is in uh, the fact that, that the universe has observers, including mathematicians, that mathematics is uh, a product of the higher human intellect, yet nevertheless it finds application to the deepest processes of nature. And I can't divorce the existence of observers, mathematicians, mathematics, laws of physics uh, from each other. I think these, these are a package and they uh, have to be explained as a whole. 
So you see, in essence, the laws of mathematics, the laws of physics, and the presence of observers as almost a, um, a, an equation with three unknowns that have to be solved simultaneously. That's exactly right. That's putting it very well, yes. You can't just, uh, just chop out something like uh, consciousness or the laws of physics or mathematics and say, well, it's just there, you know, it has no explanation. I think we've got to have something which combines all of these elements together if we truly want to explain why the world is as it is.